want to welcome you to another blessed presentation of God's Holy Word with Pastor Omar Tebow. It's recorded live at Philadelphia Christian Church here in Lafayette, Louisiana. As always, each audio message is designed to bring you into a deeper knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's get into a message that's already in session. So we're going to begin, y'all, right away with our first point, which is he came out. Saints of God, remember at Philadelphia, we are big on context. We like, we love to keep the text that we're studying in context. We don't like to remove it. Hallelujah. Pull it out and single it off. We need you to know the setting of what's going on in the Bible. Hallelujah. Of the text we're studying. And so if you can help me out a little bit. Hallelujah. Jesus is at what's called the last what? The last supper. All right. He's there with his disciples. He told them off the top that he was going to be what? Be betrayed that's right come on help help me out somebody i know it's early he told him to stop fussing about who's the what oh come on now hallelujah he told him they they didn't need to fuss about who's the greatest because he appointed unto them what a kingdom amen come on but before we get there satan wants to do what to us he wants to like oh come on now we're getting somewhere Hallelujah. But Jesus said, Satan want to sift you like wheat, but he has what for us? He has that our do what? Oh, come on now. All right. We learning some things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we have to be careful, y'all, not to put any confidence in our flesh and in our own strength. Because just like Peter, if we trust in ourselves before the rooster does what? We will deny him how many times? That's right. Thrice somebody said, hallelujah, they pull out that King James version. Amen. And so, hallelujah, that's what we've been studying. That's what we've been studying. That's what we've been studying. And he told them, hallelujah, uh, before that everybody was going to be blessing them with stuff and giving them things. But Jesus says, but now, uh, at that moment in time in history, some things were going to change the way the world treats the church. And uh, he told him, go ahead, bring your purse, bring your script, and bring your what? Your sword. Amen. Amen. And so that's where we stopped last time, and we pick up in verse 39 this morning. The Bible says, and he came out. And when I study the scriptures, I say, out from where? Well, he came out from the Last Supper, from the upper room. You see what I'm saying? He came out from the Lord's table. He came out from the house that he was in when he told his disciples, go, hallelujah, and seek out a place. Say, my master needs a place for him to, hallelujah, eat the Passover. He says, he says, now, and they went to that upper room and they were blessed to be there, but, but he's coming out of there right now. He, he's finished with telling them what he needs to tell them. He's finished with breaking the bread and saying, this is my body, which is given for you. He's finished with pouring the fruit of the vine, saying, this is my blood, which is shed for you. So he's finished with that now. And the Bible says, and he came out. And then King James says, uh, and, and he came out and went as he was wont, the Bible says. And that, that phrase is a phrase, hallelujah, that means he came out and went where he habitually went. He went to a place where he customarily went. He went to the usual place. He went to the place that he would ordinarily go. It was a place that he frequented a lot. Hallelujah. And the Bible says he went to that place. And then it tells us in Luke 22 where the place is. He came out and he went as he was wont to what? To the Mount of Olives. Sambu team, go ahead and get that map up there for me. I want to show the people of God something. Hallelujah. Uh, Where we are. And I do this, saints, just so we can kind of know, hallelujah, what's going on. Hallelujah. I, I think I'm going to need my glasses or something. No, I'm going to just get close to it. Amen. Amen. Saints of God, this, this, this is Jerusalem back in, in Jesus' day. And you'll see the walls around the city because Jerusalem was kind of like seated on a mountain. It was it was pretty much a, a military fortress. It was hard to get in. Hallelujah. It was hard to destroy. And and. What I want to show you is just to get a picture in your mind where Christ was, hallelujah, during the last supper and where he went. If you look at this little spot right here, hallelujah, this is the spot in Jerusalem where the last supper took place. 
what I find interesting is, is that, hallelujah, this is the upper room, but the high priest stayed right around the corner. And they were going all around the city looking for Jesus, but he was right around the block. You see what I'm saying? That's a word for some of us. You're looking for God all kind of other places, and he's right near you. He's right close to you. If you just open your eyes, you can find him. Amen. And so, saints, this, this is the little upper room right here. And the Bible says he came out of the upper room. He not only came out of the upper room, but he came out of the city. And he moved as though it were, the Bible tells us, hallelujah, to the Mount of Olives. This is the mountain range that's right here to the right of the city. You'll see it right here. Hallelujah. So he moves and he goes into the Mount of Olives. Now I want you to take your Bible and turn with me to John chapter 18. Come on, turn with me here. I just want you to see what's going on. Not only from a theological aspect. But 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 also from a geographical aspect. Hallelujah. In John 18, 1. So we know he went to the Mount of what? The Mount of Olives. 18, 1 says, and when Jesus of John, John 18, 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kadron. Where was a garden? Hallelujah. Let's let's flip to the other, the other glory to God, the other map. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was a nice little fade element y'all did there. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so the last supper, it, it goes on right here. He comes out of the city. We don't know exactly which gate he went out of, but we know he came out of the city. He travels with his disciples. Hallelujah. Into the Mount of Olives. And the Bible says right here in John 18, 1, that he went to a garden. He went to a garden. So we're getting specific, Brother Heaven. Whenever you want to find a, a, a more specific answer in the Bible, you just use the scripture to interpret itself. Amen. That's the old doctrine called sola scriptura. Say that with me. Sola scriptura. The Bible will always clarify itself. It'll always show you, hallelujah, uh, or something. If you have a question, it'll show you the answer. The, the, old, the old Calvinist used to say, script, you use scripture to interpret scripture. Amen. And so that's sola scriptura. So we found out, hallelujah, in Luke that he went to the Mount of Olives. And now John tells us what particular part of the Mount of Olives he went to a garden. Now, if we turn, if we had time to turn to Mark 14 and, and, and Matthew, hallelujah, 26, it would tell us that he not only went to the Mount of Olives, he not only went to a garden, but it would give us the name of that garden. He went to a garden, hallelujah, by the name of Gethsemane. Somebody say Gethsemane. Gethsemane. Amen. So he went out the Last Supper. Walked to the Mount of Olives. The Bible says, cross the brook Kidron. You see it right here? It was a little stream that went through. Crossed the brook Kidron and went to this place called Gethsemane. Say Gethsemane with me. Gethsemane. Now, saints of God, that word Gethsemane is not Hebrew, is not Greek, is Aramaic. And that word means, hallelujah, the olive press. It means the oil or olive oil press. The Mount of Olives was called the Mount of Olives because they had numerous, countless amounts of olive orchards, olive trees. Hallelujah. And so you have the Mount of Olives filled with just olive trees. They would take all those olives and they would bring them to Gethsemane, which is the olive press. And they would take the olives and they would take two, hallelujah, gigantic stones, Miss Suzanne. They would take an upper stone, a millstone, they take a, a, a lower millstone. And they would put the olives between the two stones and they would press. They would press. And there was great pressure, great weight, hallelujah, squeezing the olives. And they would take the olives and they would smash them. They would pulverize them. Because what they wanted was not, hallelujah, the olives. They wanted what was inside the olives. Amen. They wanted the olive oil. Because the olive oil was so valuable. It was so precious. They used olive oil back then, hallelujah, to trim their lamps. They would put the olive oil in lamps. And so olive oil would bring light. 
They would use olive oil to cook and to dip their bread with. And if you go to some Mediterranean restaurants to this day, hallelujah, Olive Garden will give you a little olive dip and there's a little olive oil. And I love that. I like to dip my bread in the olive oil. And some of you, hallelujah, you've been cooking with that Crisco, Crisco for far too long. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. You can cook with that olive oil. You can put it in your noodles when you boil your noodles with that olive oil. I miss our oil. And so, and so olive oil was used for light. It was used for cooking. It was used for food. You see? And so they would bring it to Gethsemane. They would bring it to the olive press, the oil press. To break off the outer layer, to smash it, to pulverize it, to grind it, to pull the, to pull the oil, what was really valuable that was on the inside out of it. I want to tell you here something about this. The Bible says that Jesus went out. He went to the Mount of Olives, but he also went to the Garden of Gethsemane. He went to a place, hallelujah, where he would be pressed. He went to a place where he would be ground. He went to a place where, hallelujah, his outer uh, garment, his outer facade, his outer tabernacle, hallelujah, is about to be pulverized so that what's inside of him could flow out. Amen. And just like the olive oil, we provide light with olive oil. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Amen. Amen. And just like we use that olive oil for food, Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. Amen. Amen. And so what we, what, what, what we needed at Gethsemane was on the inside of Jesus. You see? And he was brought there. And I told you that they would take a, a upper and a lower stone and they would grind. Amen? And they, it, was a, it was intense pressure. You need to know that at Gethsemane, Jesus was under intense pressure. That was the upper stone of God the Father pressing down on God the Son. His wrath for the sins of mankind. His wrath, hallelujah, for uh, uh, the wages of sin that we have committed. And so Jesus needed to be punished, amen, so that we could be set free. And so God the Father was pressing down upon him. The weight of all the sin of humanity was upon him. The weight of the sins from Adam, hallelujah, from Reginald, hallelujah, from Dalton, hallelujah, from Emmett, hallelujah, the sins of Omar, Corey, hallelujah, from Miss Denise, all the, all humans ever born on this planet, from Adam till now, there's a little baby being born in women's and children right now, all the sins of all humanity. Every lie, every curse word, every fornication, every adultery, every lustful thought was being pressed down upon the, uh, the son of God. And the weight was heavy. But not only was there an upper stone upon the shoulders of Jesus, there was a lower stone pressing up as well. That lower stone was the minions of hell. Satan and all of his devils. And in that garden, we're going to study, hallelujah, that not only was God the Father pressing down upon him, but Satan and his minions was pressing up. And Jesus found himself in the middle of a rock in a hard place. Somebody say Gethsemane. Gethsemane. And brothers and sisters, it's in Gethsemane, you find out what you're made of. <laughs> you find out what you're made of. Gethsemane to you represents that tough place that you're in. It represents a place of trial and tribulation. It represents a place of loss, of frustration. It represents a place of testing. You see? But when you're in your Gethsemane, hallelujah, you got to make sure that the right stuff come out, not the wrong stuff. We got people want to know where they are in Christ. You know? Where am I in Christ? Am I full grown or am I still a baby? And we got a lot of people, especially in Philadelphia, you don't know where you're at in Christ. Because sometimes you act like you're more than what you are in Christ. You begin to give advice and cut up, hallelujah, to people, hallelujah, that's way ahead of you in Christ. And so you got to understand where you are in Christ. That you don't give a, get ahead of yourself. You see? And you got to watch that. Amen. And I want to show you a good way to find out where you are in Christ, where you are in your spiritual walk. You'll find out exactly who you are in Christ at Gethsemane. At Gethsemane. At Gethsemane. At Gethsemane.
We pray that you are blessed, encouraged, and challenged by today's message. As always, we would love for you to fellowship with us in person. Our service times are Sunday at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Also on Tuesday's midweek service at 7 o'clock p.m. You can check us out on the web 24 hours a day at philadelphiacc.org. Until next time, God bless.